Philippines Armed Forces Modernization Plan The third phase of the military's 15-year modernization plan, dubbed Horizon 3, includes the acquisition of multi-role fighter jets, radars, two additional Jose Rizal-class frigates, missile systems, helicopters and the country's first submarine fleet. Initial plans also included acquiring additional BrahMos missiles and high-mobility artillery rocket systems for the Army for coastal defense. The modernization effort began in 2013, but budget limitations have delayed progress. Defense Secretary Gilberto Teodoro told lawmakers last month that 10% of Horizon 1, meant to take place from 2013 to 2018, and about 53% of Horizon 2, scheduled from 2018 to 2022, are complete. However, in response to clashes between China and the Philippines in recent weeks, Manila is speeding up its acquisition plans, with the legislature earmarking 45 billion pesos in defense spending for 2024. Senators have relayed support in passing supplemental budgets for intelligence and materiel acquisitions related to South China Sea operations. Last week, the Defense Department ordered three C-130J-30 Super Hercules tactical airlifters for delivery in 2026, according to a news release from Lockheed Martin. The Philippines is also expecting to receive two BrahMos missile units in December from India. More Acero-class gunboats next year under a deal with Israel. Two new landing dock platforms from Indonesia next year. Two corvettes from South Korea around the 2025 and 2026 time frame and six offshore patrol vessels also from South Korea in 2028. Horizon 3 requires 500 billion pesos spread out over the next six years, but it is unclear how the government intends to finance the program. However, some countries have offered assistance. For example, France pitched its Scorpion diesel electric submarines as early as 2019, and its proposal includes helping the Philippines Navy develop its base in Zambales. Others bidding to supply the Philippines with submarines include Spain, which submitted a $1.7 billion offer to supply two S-80-class submarines, and South Korea's Hanwha Ocean, which updated its proposal last month for two Jongbogo-3 diesel-electric submarines. The estimated budget for procuring two submarines has been pegged at 70 to 100 billion Philippine pesos or 1.3 to 1.8 billion United States dollars. The procurement is part of the Philippines Navy's Horizon 3 modernization plan from 2023 to 2028. Once the deal is finalized, it will take at least five years for the first of the submarines to enter the fleet. The Philippines inaugurated a new Coast Guard monitoring station base on Thitu in Calayan Island Group an island occupied by Filipino forces in the disputed South China Sea, and plans to expand joint patrols with the US and Australia to counter China's increasingly aggressive actions and pure bullying in the strategic waterway. The completion of the station, which will be officially commissioned in early 2024, was designed to enhance the monitoring capabilities of the Philippines in the South China Sea region. This came as Coast Guard officials reported a further increase in the Chinese presence in the disputed region. Inaugurated earlier this month, the new three-story facility is equipped with state-of-the-art technology such as radar, automatic identification, satellite communication, and coastal cameras. Manila's outpost of Thitu is its biggest and most strategically important in the South China Sea, largely claimed by Beijing despite conflicting territorial claims by several regional nations. Known locally as Pag Aza, Thitu lies about 300 miles or 480 kilometers west of the Philippine province of Palawan. Home to about 200 people, it is used by Manila to maintain its territorial claim. A new Coast Guard station on the contested island of Thitu in the South China Sea, boosting Philippines' ability to monitor movements of Chinese vessels and aircraft in the busy disputed waterway. As tension mounts over territorial claims in the area, the Philippine Coast Guard had early this year spotted a Chinese Navy ship and dozens of militia vessels around the island, one of nine features Manila occupies in the Spratly Archipelago. High seas face-offs between Chinese and Philippine ships have intensified this year in the contested waters, fueling fears of a larger conflict that could involve the United States. The U.S. has repeatedly warned that it's obligated to defend the Philippines, its oldest treaty ally in Asia, if Filipino forces come under an armed attack, including in the South China Sea. 
The behavior of the Chinese Coast Guard, People's Liberation Army Navy and Chinese militias are sometimes unpredictable. They do not adhere to the international order and to the rule of law of the seas. What China's describing as gray zone tactics are pure bullying and it's purely illegal. Dwarfed by China's military might, the Philippines decided this year to allow an expansion of the U.S. military presence in its local camps under a 2014 defense pact. It also recently launched joint sea and air patrols with the United States and Australia in a new deterrence strategy that puts the two allied powers on a collision course with Beijing. On related news, Japan has delivered to the Philippines the first unit of a long-range air surveillance radar system to be used by the Philippine Air Force. It was part of the first major deal on military hardware that Japan had reached with another country since easing its self-imposed prohibition on arms exports. The 5.5 billion pesos shipment was made last month while work is ongoing on the remaining units for future delivery, the Japanese manufacturer Mitsubishi Electric Company said in a statement last week. The company made the announcement on the eve of the arrival of Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida in Manila for a two-day official visit. For Japan, the Philippines is a strategic partner that will share basic defense values and to enhance cooperation in defense equipment and technology. This is important for ensuring peace and stability in Japan and the region, particularly in South China Sea. In 2014, Tokyo lifted its arms export ban for the first time since its defeat in World War II. On the Philippine side, the Department of National Defense ordered three fixed and one mobile long-range air surveillance radars in 2020 for 5.5 pesos billion under a government-to-government -government deal. In an earlier statement, the Philippines Department of National Defense said the upgrade was expected to help detect, identify, and correlate any threats and intrusions within the country's exclusive economic zone. The first radar delivered in October was installed in a location facing the West Philippine Sea. The country's EEZ and the West Philippine Sea in general have been the site of recurring tensions between Philippine and Chinese Coast Guard vessels, leading to on and off diplomatic rifts between Manila and Beijing. The new warning and control radar system, FPS-3ME, can detect multiple fighter jets and ballistic missiles. The FPS-3ME is an improved version of the JFPS-3 radar, which has been used by the Japan Air Self-Defense Force, according to manufacturer Mitsubishi Electric Corporation. The Japanese company in August 2020 signed a contract with the Philippine Defense Department worth about $100 million for four FPS-3ME radars. Domestic production for the first radar concluded in October 2022, and the Philippine Air Force received it last week. The second radar is meant for the Philippine Navy, and its acquisition is made possible, thanks to $4.2 million from a Japanese-run security assistance program, according to the Japanese and Philippine governments. Neither the Japanese government nor Mitsubishi have disclosed the status of the remaining radar systems on order. The coastal radar systems are a vital addition to the armed forces of the Philippines' maritime defense capabilities and will bolster its ability to monitor and protect its extensive coastline, ensuring the safety and security of its seas. The capability of the Philippine Navy to build its own major warship vessels may no longer be a far-fetched idea. In fact, it might happen next year, as the Philippine Navy eyes foreign shipbuilders to acquire additional multi-mission vessels, including warships and submarines. As part of its long-term modernization program, a local company wants to get a share of the country's defense spending on maritime assets. But it admits the ambitious plan could not be carried out without challenges. In terms of the ability to build vessels, the Philippines can actually do a lot. The country has some medium-sized to large-sized shipyards, a lot of the assets can potentially be built here locally. What is lacking is probably the experience and the proven track record to physically build a warship. On the upside, tapping local shipyards to build the Navy's warships can be good for the economy, particularly the labor sector. Earlier this year, the Philippine Navy's capability to build its own warships, particularly the small and hard-hitting fast-attack interdictor craft missile, FAICM, got a needed boost after Israel Shipyards Limited transferred the documents and keys of a newly refurbished shipyard to its possession. The upgraded shipyard is located at Naval Station, Pascual Ledesma in Cavite City. The newly refurbished naval shipyard will facilitate the local construction of the three FAICM vessels, 
which will form part of the fleet of Philippine Navy's Acero-class patrol gunboats. Its formal handover ceremony was lined up last May as part of the Navy's pre-anniversary activities. This is a significant milestone for the shipbuilding capability of the Philippine Navy and at the time boosts the country's self-reliant defense posture program, one of the current 10-point agenda of the Department of National Defense. The 32-meter-long fast-attack interdictor craft missiles are high-speed vessels equipped with quick interceptability, remote-stabilized weapons, and short-range missiles that are capable of delivering precision strikes against larger hostiles and high-value targets on land and sea. Four of the fast-attack interdictor craft missiles will be armed with non-line-of-sight missiles with pinpoint accuracy and a range of 25 kilometers while the other five will be armed with Typhoon-mounted 30mm main cannons and .50 caliber heavy machine guns. The acquisition of these fast-attack interdictor craft missile is among the 2019 projects approved by former President Rodrigo Duterte's under the Horizon 2 list of the armed forces of the Philippines Modernization Program. The Philippines can develop its own shipbuilding industry to ensure the military will have the capability to secure the country and its territorial waters from piracy, terrorism and encroachment. China's foreign ministry has defended the behavior of its vessels in the waterway and said Beijing will firmly safeguard what it views as its territorial sovereignty. Since taking office in 2022, Philippine President Marcos Jr. has taken a stronger stance over the South China Sea than his predecessor, Rodrigo Duterte's, amid the wider power struggle that has been playing out in the region for years. The South China Sea is widely seen as a potential flashpoint for global conflict, and the recent confrontations between Manila and Beijing have raised concerns among Western observers of potentially developing into an international incident if China, a global power, decides to act more forcefully against the Philippines, a U.S. treaty ally. Washington and Manila are bound by a mutual defense treaty signed in 1951 that remains in force, stipulating that both sides would help defend each other if either were attacked by a third party. Marcos has strengthened U.S. relations that had frayed under his predecessor, with the two allies touting potential future joint patrols in the South China Sea. Philippine Defense Secretary equated Chinese behavior in the region to that of a schoolyard bully. Recent incidents that have the region on edge include Chinese water cannons blocking the resupply of a shipwrecked Philippine military outpost, and a lone Filipino diver cutting through a floating Chinese barrier. Earlier this year, the Philippine Coast Guard accused a Chinese Coast Guard ship of pointing a military-grade laser at some of its crew, temporarily blinding them. In recent weeks the Aeungan Shoal has been the target of Chinese efforts to stake its claim on territory to which the Philippines has sovereign rights. Chinese ships have been blockading the entrance to the shoal to ward off attempts to deliver supplies to the military outpost at the atoll. Resupply boats have been playing a deadly cat-and-mouse game with Chinese vessels to preserve the lifeline for the Philippine troops stationed at Aeungan. The harassment by Chinese vessels, which includes firing a water cannon at a Philippine boat, has been documented on video as evidence of the brazen disregard for Philippine sovereignty. Beijing has been unmoved by the close to a hundred diplomatic protests filed by Manila and continues to build up its flotilla of military and fishing vessels in the West Philippine Sea. The Philippines recently denounced Chinese aggression in the West Philippine Sea, in which the China Coast Guard attempted to obstruct the Philippine Coast Guard's resupply mission to BRP Sierra Madre in Aeungan Shoal. Today, China's biggest concern is the presence of the United States in the region. And though China's attempts to form a wider regional security agreement were rebuffed by members of the Pacific Islands Forum, it hasn't given up on the vision of having Chinese military vessels patrolling the South China Sea. Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy operating in the Indo-Pacific routinely shadow Western and Japanese ships operating in the region, particularly in areas where China claims sovereignty such as the South China Sea. The Philippines' defense chief is pushing for a swift and sweeping modernization of his country's navy and coast guard to tackle Beijing's aggressive tactics in the disputed South China Sea. The Philippines will carry it out through a comprehensive re-strategization and forging alliances, he told reporters in Manila on Monday during the commissioning of two coastal patrol ships donated by the United States. According to U.S. Navy officials, China's aggressive behavior in the South China Sea must be challenged.